Yeah, I mean, they do it really well. It's nothing that we didn't see beforehand, but, uh, you know, we'll continue to work on it. And, um, you know, it's just a lack of uh, fundamentals that play and technique that we got to just clean up, and we'll end up doing that a little bit more today. But, uh, you know, we, we've got to make sure that we protect at all times because it's a big momentum swing if anything happens like that. You're pretty satisfied with the way Folt kicked off, obviously satisfied with how he did on field goals, but... As far as kickoffs, you're pretty satisfied with the distance and, and that sort of thing? Sure. I mean, there was times, uh, you know, that we had him go right, go left, down the middle. Um, obviously, we're, we're a team that love, loves to cover kicks. Um, and our guys, I thought, for the most part, uh, did a pretty good job. Uh, and Nick having some good placement uh, really helped us out on some of those, too. So, yeah, uh, really excited about what Nick has to give us, whether it's on kickoff or on our field goals. Touchback's not that big of a deal? Uh, I wouldn't say it's not a big deal, um, you know, because there's going to be some point in time where we're going to ask Nick to to try to kick a touchback. Um, again, depending on the situation, so we'll we'll just play that by year and by game. So what was the plan, kind of not to do touchbacks? Did you want to? to we want we want to see him. We want to see our guys cover. I mean, that's one of the biggest things that we talk about building an identity for our football team, and, and that's going to start out with our kickoff coverage. Um, you know, Coach Rabel's meeting on kickoff coverage is run as fast as you can and go tackle the ball carrier. Um, and there's obviously a little bit more to that too. But, uh, you know, we want to see our guys cover kicks because we want to have that identity. And, you know, last year we did a really good job um, in the game that we had uh, against Kansas City where all of our players are up on the sideline. They do the same thing for the Saints game. They're all up there trying to watch us uh, cover kicks. So we want to establish an identity, and that's a way to do it. I like what you saw in the uh, return game, I guess, with Kyrus. Yeah, I thought Kyrus did an excellent job of catching the football. Um, you know, that's our, our number one thing is, you know, give the ball back to the offense and then, uh, you know, get that first first down, which I thought he really did. I know he'd like to have the one, uh, you know, taken back a little bit because he ended up catching the ball close to the sideline. There was a guy right next to him. Uh, that's just part of that youth um, wanting to make a play. But I think for the most part, him just catching it and running and getting upfield and getting positive yardage was a big deal for us. Maybe take some hard hits. Does he open himself up to, to stuff at the end of his runs? Uh, you know, he's battling. Uh, he's going to get every inch that he possibly can. And, you know, that's a part about being young, too. Um, there's a point in time where you got, if you're getting hit, you got to go down. Um, and fighting for those extra yards, he'll continue to learn um, not to take those hard shots and, and just, hey, we got what we got, and that's it. Feedback from Tim Shaw on oh. Well, it was funny because Tim's been in here already twice, uh, giving us his opinion on things, which is awesome. Um, and I asked Tim if he's ever started off a game with a turnover, and he says he hasn't. So, um, you know, there's there's a lot of positives, um, whether it was, uh, you know, the turnover, Nick's, um, you know, making five for five, the punt return. But yeah, uh, Tim had a list of stuff that he felt each player can improve on, whether it's technique, fundamentals. He gave his two cents uh, with me. So it, it's awesome to have another guy who has another set of eyes and a guy who's done it for a long time in his career uh, to give you advice. What was your view on, on uh, the opening play and, and how sure were you that you had the ball? Or... <laughs> well, I, was, I wasn't sure. Um, you know, I'm kind of far back uh, where we're starting to kick off um, because I want to try to see our guys running down there and maybe see what they're trying, um, a, an opponent's trying to give us. Uh, so I didn't really see other than um, Amani going and swiping at the ball. Um, you know, that's stuff that obviously we, we teach our guys uh, defensively going after the football. And Amani, you know, brought that in there on the special teams. But I didn't notice until all of our sideline was really you know given the uh, hand signal that we end up getting the ball and then when they showed it on the replay and and you can hear stretch up top saying hey uh, that's going to be our ball um, obviously it's a it's a huge momentum for us and uh, really really excited that Amani end up making that play Thanks, man. Appreciate it. yeah um, feel like we haven't played there at all really um but yeah it'd be fun it'd be the first home game I'm um, excited to see the fans and um, get everything going. What's kind of been, the, I guess, the mood shift this week? You guys obviously disappointed over Sunday. Just kind of turning the page of that game and, and kind of starting fresh this week. Yeah, just ready for preparation. Come out here and get better, make each other better. Um, um, bring the intensity all week on all three phases and then let it show on Sunday. But um, it's just an urgency and ready to get to work. Their defense feel different from, from the one you saw last year out there? Their defense feels different. Does their defense feel 
No, um, I mean, they um, have some new guys. Um, I feel like they run the same scheme. Um, probably added some different things, but it's pretty much the, it's pretty much the same stuff, but a couple new guys. Um, so no, not much too different. Very good to jump between two. You guys have lost week one before, but how important is it to make sure they don't start piling up and you don't dig yourself a hole in this season? I mean, yeah, nobody wants to lose, and you know, especially consecutive losses. So, you know, you just got to make sure we are, we're locked in, hold each other accountable throughout the week. Um, uh, everybody um, working hard on what things they need to get better at and, and collectively as well, and just be focused and locked in um, each and every day. And then let it just turn into Sunday, us winning the game. Does it grate on you guys? I mean, obviously one year doesn't carry over to the next. It's been a while since you guys have put one in the win column. I mean, we want to win. I mean, we're not going out there trying to lose. The focus is winning and winning the game. And this week is the Chargers and focus on winning that one. Mike said the other day that, that probably the game, the Saints game where you had you know, 15 carries is probably going to be a little bit of an outlier. you figure you're expecting more carries? Do you have any, any idea? Do you, or, you know, do you expect more coming up? Or? When my name, when my number is called, just go out there and try to make a play. Um, never, um, I'm in there. I can't worry about all the other stuff. Control what I can control. And then when, when I'm in there to uh, go make a play, try to go do that. Um, I know Ryan's preparation. Yeah, he's going to be ready. I'm um, sure he's he's motivated and put that game behind him. And he's been been working out here and uh, and been himself. But I know what type of competitor Ryan is. I know he'll be ready on Sunday and um, um, ready to go to work. What do you feel about the offensive line just in front of you and the protection there in the game one with that mission? I thought they did a, a, a great job, um, you know, game one and um, getting all the jitters out. I think, feel like they played physical at the line of scrimmage. Um, we have some space in there. A lot of good things to build off of and a lot of things to get better at as well. We always see you break off big plays on the screen game. Why is that so successful for you guys? I don't know how we keep going, though. It's been fun. Um, I feel like just execution on the offensive part, guys just doing their job and me catching the ball and trying to get north and south and get the most out of the play. Were you impressed with the Coach Brave would come down the sidelines. I wasn't even looking at Brave. I was looking at that green grass that was in front of me. So, <laughs> no, I didn't see it. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay. Kept in touch with Eckler and the rest of that group chat since the summer. Yeah, we yeah, we still talk every now and then. Is it about the same stuff, or is it just kind of about general NFL stuff? Oh, if we need to reach out about anything, uh, we just hit each other up. But it ain't nothing too much. Just checking in on everybody, make sure everybody's good. Um, just seeing how everybody's doing. And if anybody has anything they want to get, um, they want to talk about, you know, they just put in a group message or anything or write somebody separately. Derek, you talked a lot about being a good teammate, getting other guys involved and some of that stuff. A lot of the best success the offense had on Sunday night was when you were involved. Is there any part of you when you go into the meeting room that maybe you're elbowing Tim or somebody and saying, can, can we get a few more touches this way after that? No, not at all. I'm just trying to make a play whenever uh, my name is called and when I'm in there and just trying to get everybody going any way I can. We're making the play or me without the ball. And um, that's all I try to do every time I'm in there and, and ever since I've been here. So, you know, just trying to be a playmaker and, and help us win and give us any chance that I can when you I'm in there. You started off well, and during your time here, you've really run the ball well in the second half before the quarter wearing down people. Would you like to see that get established in this offense again, that you guys can own the second half run the ball? Well, I mean, Whatever it's called, it's called. Whether it's in the first half or the second half, I want to be effective um, and um, make a play when when it's there. And um, whenever I get an opportunity, how many opportunities I get, I mean, I'm just you know, excited to be out there, help us in any way possible, um, first through the, the fourth. So I just want to take advantage of my opportunities when they come. Jeff said come that when, when he's chipped by a running back, he considers it kind of an, an annoyance <laughs> on the occasions that you chip, do you, is that kind of how you view it? You want to be an annoyance? Definitely. I want them guys to get tired of it and, you know, not rush as hard as they do, you know, um, especially the premier rushers. I want to slow them down as much as possible. And if it's, if, if it's annoying, I mean, it's working, so.
Yeah, yeah, I've got to do a better job of, of doing that, of getting those guys into a rhythm. Um, you know, there were times where we were able to kind of put some drives together and get the drive started, um, and that's when we were obviously most effective and able to move the football. But I've got to do a better job uh, with our drive starters to make sure uh, that, that we're getting our guys into a rhythm sooner. You look back maybe at uh, maybe Ryan from Sunday, maybe what, uh, what went right, what went wrong in evaluating his play. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, as it's always going to be where we can't we can't turn the ball over. Um, you know, there were times where uh, ball the balls went to the right place, and you know, for whatever reason, uh, you know, we didn't didn't come up with a, a, a catch. So, um, you know, just just looking forward to him being able to come back this week and and go out there and, and get another opportunity to go out there and, and, and lead our offense. Uh, but there were opportunities to be made by everybody, and we got to do a better job of taking advantage of those situations when they come up. Preseason, or I guess training camp, that, that Ryan and, and DeAndre account for a really good connection. Did you see that same connection all the time in, in the opener, or, or did it kind of? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know about all the time, but I think there are some definite situations where he definitely came up. Um, I want to say there was a, a, a second and longer, maybe it was a first and 15 on the second drive or second or third drive. He hit him on an in cut uh, versus cover five, which was really good, good trust throw. Um, Hop did a good job of winning. Uh, being being exactly where Ryan needed him to be when he needed to be there, um, and there were there were different examples of that throughout the game. It's just uh, you know we got to do a better job of doing it consistently. When you guys, Receivers. When you and Ryan sit down, you know, at the beginning of the week, what plays are up, what plays are down? How was that process going into the Saints game? Did you guys do that extensively? Yeah, yeah, I, th I thought it was fine. Um, you know. Um, Again, I, I think it's probably more more on my shoulders in terms of making sure I'm calling the correct plays, as opposed to the plan being flawed itself. Receivers didn't seem to get much separation. What do you, what do, you do in the course of a game if they're being well covered and, and things aren't opening up? Yeah, uh, you know, try to try to get different matchups, try to move people around. Um, you know, there, there's a, a variety of different things that we can do, and. Were there times where there wasn't a lot of separation? I think so. But there's also times where, where you know, I thought guys ran good routes. A um, couple examples of trailing, winning some good routes and getting open. A couple examples of hop doing it. You know, so, uh, again, it's, it's, it's all about consistency. You can't turn the ball over, and we've got to be able to go out there and play, you know, winning football uh, for, for four quarters in order to win in this league. I feel good that some of the schemed plays, the, certainly the flea flicker, Tajay uh, on, on the route up the, up the left side, you had touchdown plays there, had the, had the throw come together. Yeah, and I, I don't know if anybody's feeling good about anything, you know, with the performance and, and us being able to go out there and not, not win. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that's our job as coaches is to come back into the office and, and evaluate what was good, what was bad, um, you know, and, and try to fix that and make sure that we have more good than bad next week. In the play calls, it seemed like you guys were much more heavy pass maybe than in the past. Was that more by – game plan design or is that just kind of the look the defense gave you or yeah situation? i mean there's a there's a lot that goes into that the the down a distance you know how's the game going where are you at what you know who's on the field for us who's on the field for them so uh you know i i, I don't think again i don't think we went into the game trying to throw the ball like that uh just kind of how the game you know uh developed in in you know that that was kind of the dna of the game as as far as we're concerned with that Get more touches for Derrick Henry. Like in the past fourth quarter, close game, you guys really lean on him in the past, but it didn't happen this season. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, we we like to to ride ride our guys, ride our best players. Um, so I think that kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier in terms of you know having a good plan, and then uh, I I have to do a better job of just going out there and executing it. LA's defense has some very big name playmakers, James, Mack, Osa. How do you go about? Playmaking and planning for that, and also protection for that. Yeah, yeah, they've got they've got good players at every level, um, uh, and and they move them around. You know, Derwin's all over the place, uh, both ends. You, you don't know what side they're going to be on. So, um, yeah, there's there are guys need to be locked in and focused as to where they're at, um, in order to make sure those guys don't wreck the game. The fact that the Tajay ends up with you know 34 snaps and was in there quite a bit, that pretty good reflection on what you guys have seen from him in terms of. You know, it's his first camp and been preseason and so Yeah, I think again, it's it's he he did a good job of handling his piece of the game plan, um, and then for whatever reason, you know, the game kind of dictated that that we were in that personnel grouping a little bit more than others, um, and and he did a good job of going out there and, and made some good plays when the ball found him uh, in the run game. 
um, you know, had some op ops in the past game and, and, you know, looking forward to him again, continuing to grow on that and, and hopefully, uh, you know, we can continue to build on that. Look back on the success you had with their running and passing in the first half, and then basically his absence in the second half. Is that credit to the Saints? Was that just the way the offense went? Was that a mistake? <laughs> How did that play out? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, probably like to have a call or two back off the top of my head here to be able to get him probably probably the ball a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't. It was just again all that. That's my job. Um, to make sure that that I'm putting putting the, that that we're getting the ball to our best players, and, and I got to do a better job of that. What are you looking to see out of the tight ends in terms of maybe increasing their involvement here from week one to week two? Yeah, um, I thought you know there were some opportunities with Chig, uh, just consistently continuing to win. I thought he he had ops, um, and for whatever reason, you know the ball didn't find him. Uh, but again, just just hopefully this week when when we have the opportunities, we're able to take advantage of it. Uh, I, I thought he looked fine. You know, he had the one drop, unfortunately, but uh, he did some other some other things there where he was really running and um, uh, you know had that that really good in cut when we were backed up. Uh, that was a big play for us, got us out of the uh, you know shadow of the end zone. Um, so there there were definite signs that that he looked like himself. You saw some improvements oh, in the second half in the offensive line. What mm -hmm. specifically stood out to you? Just kind of getting into groove, some adjustments that they made. Yeah, I think uh, everyone kind of settled in a little bit. And, and you know did a much better job for us. It felt like they did a better job for us on you know in those known passing situations. Uh, it's 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 tough. It, you know on, on third down. First of all, we got to do a better job on first and second down. Anytime it's third and ten, it's going to be hard to convert. Um, I don't care who you're playing or where you're playing. So, um, but I thought they did a good job of, of settling in a little bit and, and you know giving Ryan time to be able to, to deliver accurate footballs. He's prided himself for a long time on converting in the red zone. Yeah. When you look back at Sunday. How frustrating is that? Yeah, really frustrating. I mean, um, uh, again, I, I, as you look at it, it's it's being able to be efficient on first and second down. Um, you know, we had the one drive. We end up having a holding call. It ends up being first and twenty. Again, you're you're behind the sticks. It's going to be difficult to to continue with that drive. Um, you may I think it was second and twenty. Uh, you know, so we get down at the end of the game. We have a tackle for loss. It's second and twelve. So there's just times where you put yourself behind the sticks, and it just again, whether you're at the 15 yard line or, or you know the minus 25, anytime you're you're behind the chains like that, it's difficult to to, to convert, um, especially against the defense like the Saints. Like they've got a good defense and, and they played well. So uh, again, we got to do a better job on first and second down. Uh, you mentioned last, last week potentially getting off script early in a game should sort perfect of example of it right yeah, there, right? right? Like so there it is. How do you feel like you guys could have done better Not on that first off drive after the turnover? Yeah. Yeah, just stayed on sides. You know, I think if we do that, we had two false start penalties um, within the first, I think it was three or four plays, the, the P and 10 and then the third down. We got to stay on sides and, and maintain our composure, um, you know, and, and, you know, no one's laughing, but it chuckled a little bit when, when looking back at the game and thinking about that and the discussion that we had last week. So, uh, yeah, just, just got to do a good job of, of operating and, and uh, executing the, the basic fundamental core aspects of our offense. Yeah, it was good to see him out there. Um, yeah, like you said, we saw it all training camp, and it kind of came to fruition uh, last week. So hopefully that can continue for us because that's a big part of what we need. Your takeaways from Sunday, as far as what you like, what's got to be better? Yeah, X plays. I mean, we they have five passes for 160 yards. Can't let the ball get thrown over our head. Um, I mean, some of those it's. it's we're actually winning and pass rush relatively quickly, and they're throwing it before we're able to get there. Um, so we got to do a better job there, just keeping the ball in front of us, not let them throw it over our head, um, win some of those one-on-one -on -one matchups. And then the four-minute, like, talk about stopping the run, being more physical, and four minutes the definition of that. And, and we didn't get it done. So we got to be better there. Really you know, what's really compliment. Double moves, you know, from What's your coaching point? to the guys to you know, not sit on the stitch or cover that. Yeah, I think they got to know the type of player they're going against, right? Like we've talked about before, all, all these receivers have different skill sets, right? So um, it's no different than this week with Mike Williams, Keenan Allen. They get Palmer in there. They're all a little bit different with how they do things. So I think understanding the skill sets, understand what they're trying to do with guys. And, and again, you just got to be careful sitting on the routes at the sticks with guys that can run like that, right? Because then you get caught behind. You don't get a big play like you like with the fumble return that wasn't over, overturned. 
what do you say to your guys in terms of you know trying to keep them focused for the next play so that you know nothing goes haywire? Yeah, I think uh, it's ultimately we we got to control what we can control. You know, like there's going to be calls that go our way. There's going to be calls that don't go our way. Um, literally in my mind, I'm thinking about the next play, trying to keep their butts over there on the field instead of running off. Like that was a big thing, just trying to keep them even at even the first play of the game. Like stay over here until we know what's going on, um, and we got to be ready to play defense regardless. So if it doesn't go our way, we got to be ready to turn the page and go to the next play. Jeff was very complimentary of the chipping the Saints did. Is it unusual? For an interior guy to get chipped to the degree he did by Yeah, I mean we've we've seen it at times before. Um again, they can only help so many places. They're gonna chip him, they're not gonna be able to chip the edges and, and or possibly Nico or some of these other guys, but we've seen it from time to time where they'll set that tight end in there. I would say it's a little bit different rare on on third down with the back, but they were using a full back, right, in protection, so they had a little bit bigger body in there. So um I'd say it's unique. It's something we got to be ready for moving forward. And you get to this great run and that step in the run for opponents. Uh, you surprised at all that, that making other teams one dimensional hasn't helped in the, in the passing? Yeah, you would like to think so. You know, you would like to think if, if they're going to sit back there and try to throw it and we know they're not going to try to run it so much, like we should be able to rush a little bit better. We should be able to cover a little, little bit better. Um, it all goes hand in hand. Right? It takes 11 guys to stop the pass, 11 guys doing their job, the guys up front being able to affect the, affect the quarterback, the guys in the back end being able to cover and win their one-on-ones. And at the same time, we're in zone coverage, we're in match coverage, being able to execute, right? See, see things the same way and everybody be on the same page. So X plays are uh, disappointing. Something we got to get fixed at Rear, head again. And it, it was that way early in the season last year. Yeah, I'm, uh, extreme, right? Like we talked about that all the time, regardless of who we're playing. Like, if we make them drive it, there's more opportunities for us to make a play, more opportunities to get them off schedule, more opportunities to create a hopefully a third and long where we can get off the field, right? One thing about the Chargers, they had I think five, ten play drives last week, so they were methodical. And granted, they were running the crap out of the ball, but they were pretty methodical driving the ball down the field and finding success. So they weren't really relying on the X plays as much. Last. And they came, but it was really sound offense and being able to stay ahead of the chains and create third and ones, third, third and two, so they could convert. Um, but again, if we, if we can find ways to get them behind the sticks, create some third and longs where we can rush and cover, I like our chances getting off the field. If you get in the third and two, three, four, five window. It's hard on the defense. It is. It's hard. I know you've got limited evidence, but how different is this offense with Kellen Moore, do you think? And what, what are you expecting compared to what you saw last time? Yeah, I think there's uh, some similarities to what they did with Herbert prior to Kellen being there. I think Kellen's got a stamp on it, obviously. You see a lot of the carryover from Dallas. Some of the things they were doing in Dallas uh, – has transferred over, but I, I think there was some similarities in terms of scheme um, with what they were doing prior with Herbert in, in L.A. So um, we got to be prepared for everything. We've been going back through, coming back through what he does well. Um, I mean, what they did in the run game was impressive. I think that's something Kellen's got a stamp on, um, and they did a really good job last week with that. So it's something we got to be prepared for, just the scheme runs, what's, what's going to be new that shows up for us. So um, we'll see where it goes. Spending all camp and after spending all camp in new positions, how did Molden and McCrary do when they had to shift back to their old spots? Yeah, I thought they did good. I mean, they got thrown in the fire there. Um, they had been preparing for it. Like, they go through all that stuff in meetings and walkthroughs. They get reps. So it's not like it was totally foreign to them. Obviously, the experience of playing there last year. So I thought they did, both did a really good job going out there and being able to execute. Yeah, uh, total. I think uh, everything we do um, from an emotional, physical, toughness, effort standpoint, um, it starts with Jeff, right? I mean, between Je our leaders, Jeff, Aziz, KB, like everything starts with them. And Jeff's a vocal, loud, hold guys accountable type of leader for us. Um, so everything kind of goes through him, you know? So, and it's been really good with Arden and with Tart and 
those other guys they're committed to doing that but at the same time they know they got to earn the right to rush and then they go and rush you know so it's been good Yeah, you you gotta know where he's at. Like he's uh he's an issue. There's matchup issues in, in the passing game. Uh, he does a good job running the ball. He's he's had a big time success in the screen game in the past. Um, he's getting his way out. Like they're gonna find ways to get him out, whether it's check downs and Herbert's finding him. Um, but he's a big part of what they do.